Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin Falvey, Editor-in-Chief of Boating Magazine. Welcome to another episode of Boating Roundtable. I'm joined today by Boating Editor-at-Large, Randy Vance, and two very special guests. We've got Jeffrey Moog, who's Content Director for the Water Sports Foundation. And we've got Jim Emmons, who's Executive Director at the Water Sports Foundation. If you don't know, the Water Sports Foundation is a very important water and safety organization. They partner with organizations such as the Coast Guard, the National Association of State Boating Law Administrators, and others. They're responsible for over 1 billion messages about boating safety on the internet. Gentlemen, welcome to Boating Roundtable. Thank you, Kevin. Glad to be here. Thank you, Kevin. Randy, great to be here, guys. Great yeah. to have you. Today's discussion is going to be about boating safety. It's a subject that's near and dear to our hearts here at Boating, and specifically boater education. I'm gonna have Randy kick it off, but we're gonna talk about why and how and what boater education should mean to you as a boater. Fellas, let's go around the table. All right, guys. Hey, you know, one of the things that, um, that we've discussed in the background quite a bit is the importance of boater education. There's a lot of reasons for it. A moment ago, if you want to go to greed, we were talking about whether or not there are discounts on your insurance for it. And actually, I just got done looking up at the Progressive website, and that is one of the 10 ways you can get a discount on your boat insurance. So it's documented. It'll save you money to be educated and probably pay you back more than you might pay for boater education course. What do you think, Jim? Well, it's certainly a good idea, regardless if you're saving money or not, but that's, a, that's always good to save money. We like to say that boater education is the all-encompassing thing of boating safety. If we can just get boaters to get out and take a boater education course, they're not just going to learn about life jackets or fire extinguishers or throw cushions. They're not going to learn just about navigation. They're going to learn about everything. And that's the thing that boater education courses are really good for. So it's the theme of our uh, campaign this year for the Water Sports Foundation. Everything we're doing is driving boaters to boater education to increase boater education certificates. What's that going to do for the uh, boating population, increasing boater certificates? Well, unfortunately, uh, the numbers from 2020 uh, increased from, tw from 2019. We saw a 25.5% increase in incidents, which includes injuries, accidents, and deaths. And it's just unfortunate that people die senselessly on the water. Boating is a recreational sport that we should all enjoy. You shouldn't go out on a day of fun and have someone not come back alive. So the main thing is, you know, if boaters will take a boater education course, they'll be safer. They'll know more about boating. I think they will be better captains on their boat. They'll understand how to get their crew out safely where they're going and bring them all back to the dock. So it's just the all encompassing item of boating safety. You know, taking a boater education course doesn't take very long, whether it's in person or whether it's a virtual online, you learn so many things even for veteran boaters. I often relearn things when I take a boater education course or dip into uh, uh, Chapman's piloting or some of the other educational books out there. It's, there's just a, it's a massive amount of information. It's almost as, as technical as being a pilot, even though the skill set for actually maneuvering the boat is not quite as 3D, if you want, if you will. But there's a lot going on. Markers, for instance, what do all those things mean? How accessible is boater education for the boater? How can we, how can a boater tell the boaters, our audience, how they can get boater education, gentlemen? Well, I'll tell you that on our website, the watersportsfoundation.com website, we have a whole page dedicated to all the boater education courses that are available in America. Um, but each state agency, you know, uh, we're here in Florida, so Florida Fish and Wildlife offers boater education courses uh, on their website. Same thing is true for every state in the United States and all the territories for that matter. Um, it's part of the whole program that comes from the Coast Guard supplying uh, federal dollars to these agencies that they have to provide education as, as, as something in return. But so your state agency could help you find a boater education course. Or, you know, if you're a member of Boat US or even if you're not a member, the Boat US program offers a boater education program that's entirely free. You don't even have to pay for it. Um, it's, it's, um, it's dedicated to each state so that when you take the course from your state, you get specific information about your state, and then you get a nice certificate, a nice card, a wallet card 
that says you have passed your state voter education course. And Jim, just to add to that, um, you know, on the on that website as well, you'll find links to on the water courses that that you can that you can also take with with Boat US and and with uh, many other providers. You could even um, get a, a you know a private captain that would coach you through some things that you want to do to you know build up your skills. As Randy said, it's never too late to improve your boating skills, even for an experienced boater. Uh, getting out there and just you know running through a crosswind dock docking situation, for example, run through that a couple times. It just it gives you a lot more confidence. And speaking from my own experience, having that confidence that you gain with a little bit of practice and a little bit of knowledge makes it that much more fun when you're out there on the water. I just feel, you know, when I'm out there with my family and I feel confident in what I'm doing, it's just, it's, it, it's a lot easier to have fun uh, that way. And I feel like I, as a captain, as a dad, I'm doing the right thing. You know, a moment ago, you mentioned that um, incidents on the water have increased 25% from 2019 to 2020. Are there any trends within um, those accident statistics? Uh, well, We're having I mean, accidents, are they, ac are, they, are they educated boaters or uneducated boaters? You know, well, we tend I can to tell think you that, that if they those, got in a wreck, they're a problem. Yeah, I can tell you, of those uh, incidents, um, there's, there's a huge reporting form that the state um, has to report back to the Coast Guard. Those annual numbers are, are, are tallied up for the previous year. They usually roll out in June. So in, say, June of 2021, we got the, the 2020 numbers. And inside those numbers, the report that comes out from the Coast Guard, which you can look at at uscgboating.org. That's the Coast Guard website. We'll put these, um, all these URLs down below, folks. Check the check the comment section, audience, and you'll find all these URLs that we're giving out uh, in the comments. On their website, um, they, they report that 77% of those that were involved in a boating accident where there was a death did not have, the operator did not have any boater education at the time. And, and the inverse of that is that only 12% of those that were involved in a boating, a boating accident that involved a death had voter education. So that tells me that if, if more people would take uh, voter education in some way, either virtual or a class like Jeff was talking about, I think we could turn these numbers around dramatically. Definitely. Well, let me ask you this. Is, can you generalize a little bit on that statistic? Do they know, just suppose it's a non-fatal accident. We have you know, thousands of those every year. Uh, does that trend follow with voter education? It Absolutely. does. Yeah, the, the, yep. the same general trend. And we actually see this in in all of the data if you break it down between, um, you know, a, a, a property accident or an injury accident or, God forbid, a, a fatality accident. The um, the statistics I, that, that we see tend to track pretty, pretty closely. And, and voting education is probably one of the most significant indicators of, uh, of risk. You know, if you don't have this voting education, you're at more risk. And the, you know, the inverse of that is if you take one of these courses, you really do increase your own safety and the safety of the people that you're out there boating with by taking these courses. It's probably been four or five years since I took one. Uh, and, I, and I guess my excuse for that is that I'm immersed in this because working with you guys, we're creating an enormous amount of safety content that resides on our U.S. Coast Guard page and and our other websites related to boating and sport fishing and et cetera. But I still go back and refer to textbooks and, and, uh, to get in, and brochures from the Coast Guard. Um, probably one of my weaknesses I mentioned a minute ago, the uh, aids to navigation. What in the world do all those signs mean? And a lot of times I just need a reminder on them. It's, um, I think the boater education, when I took it, the main thing it did was it gave me a structure to organize what I knew about boating and help me see where my weaknesses were. Great point. That's, that's the same experience I had when I took my boater education course about two years ago. Uh, you know, I've been a boater for a long, long time, all my life, in fact. And the things that I picked up in the course that I never knew was, was enormous. I was like, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. It was one thing after another. And so... After the completion of the course, I was like, I felt much stronger. And as Jeff said, I felt like a better captain. I felt like I could be better on the water. Even if I wasn't the captain, I could help, you know, the captain of the boat because I knew more about 
aids to, or, or the, the simple aids to navigation was one of the biggest areas that I think I picked up on. So um, veteran boaters can definitely uh, benefit from picking up a boater education course. You know, I, I have to say in my experience, it was actually a little bit humbling going into this class and I just thought I was going to breeze through it and kind of, you know, I was going to be the, the smart kid in the back of the class that knew all the answers. And um, to my surprise, I didn't know all the answers and I, and I, and I really learned some very useful, uh, useful things. So, um, you know, and, and I was struck, Randy, as, as well, you did a video uh, not too long ago um, I, about taking one of these courses. You had gone through one of these courses. And what really sure. struck me about, the, about this video is that you, Randy Vance, you know, <laughs> the, the kind of the, um, the, the voice of, of boating safety and experience at Boating Magazine, um, just walked down the dock and said, hey, I learned some things. And uh, yeah. that... It, it really struck me and it also made me feel a little bit better about my own experience where um, where I went in and discovered that I didn't know as much as I as I thought I did. What would you guys say is the most important takeaway you should have from a boating education course? Are there specific rules or navigation that you want to know or, um, you know, rather than just being general, what specifically is the most important things to know? Jeff, you know, I don't know if there's one specific thing I can say, but, you know, when you take a boater education course, you come across so many subjects, all the subjects, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, things like fire extinguishers, you know, things yeah. that we should know more about, but we don't because we don't take the time to know more, more about them. But you learn those in a boater education course. Uh, it covers it covers the gamut from one end to the other. Um, so, you know, some folks that might take a boater education course may know all about fire extinguishers, and that section on fire extinguishers may not be that helpful for them, but I bet most of the other parts are helpful, and they'll find that they, there's things that they can learn. At least that's what I found. So, and I think, Jeff, you, you agree to that too, right? Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think um, getting it in a, a whole package, right? I mean, there's, um, when, when you learn, as a lot of us do, just growing up on the water, you, you get a lot of experience, you learn a lot of things through experience. Um, but there can be holes in that knowledge. There can be things that, that you've never learned. Maybe you grew up boating in the Midwest and you moved out to California where I am and the, um, you know, the, the, the water's different, the weather's different. Um, so to, to be in a situation or in, in a class where you're given the, the, the whole package of knowledge, um, that was really helpful. And you know, going back to my, my experience in, in classes that I've taken, um, it, it, it was really helpful to get those, um, those points of knowledge that I didn't know that I didn't know. Um, so that's a real great thing that you can get from, uh, from a boater education course. That's a really important, Jeff. You don't know what you don't know, and unless you take a course. Right. Well, I was hoping I could get somebody else to say it so I wouldn't have to, but one of my weaknesses in, in boating is actually the U.S. Coast Guard rules of navigation. And uh, in particular, the one that bothers me the most is what happens when two boats are meeting on a perpendicular course. According to the rules, there is one vessel that has the burden of staying out of the way of the other one. And I always get that backwards. If you're coming across and you're showing the guy your port light, which is red, you have to stop or maneuver out of his way. And he's seeing your green light, so he gets to go. But I always get it backwards thinking, I'm showing him my green light, so I get to go. And I guess what that brings to me is there's no um, connection between highway rules and navigation rules. You know, when, when you go to a four-way stop, the rules are different. Stoplights, green, red, mean different things on the water. And there's nothing that transfers from your driving of a car that applies to driving a boat. Nothing at all. So, so the only connection is that the Coast Guard, U.S. Coast Guard calls it navigation rules of the road. Even though we're on the yeah. water, they call it actually they call it rules of navigation now. Okay. They did used to call it rules of the road. Okay, so, so I, think I hear was... them in their vernacular. <laughs> I hear them say that every now and then. But uh, uh, yeah, it's well, Randy, that there, was but... a that was a great point, and um, I you may have even confused me a little bit with it. Can can you um, uh, just go back over with us real quick? It's the person uh, to your right that is uh, what we would call the stand on vessel, the one that has the quote unquote right of way and that you give way to them. We can't say right of way because there isn't any. Every boater has the obligation to do whatever he can do to avoid a collision. 
And even the guy that's showing me his red light, telling me he has the right to cross in front of me unimpeded, has the obligation to, if I don't respond appropriately, to respond in a way that avoids a collision. But yeah, when, when you're going this way, your green light is on your starboard side. He's seeing your starboard side. He's got a green light. That means he can go. You're seeing his red light that's on his port side, and that means you have to stop or maneuver behind him or turn wide, anything you have to do to avoid a collision. And you have to make a decision that will not only avoid the collision now, but not create another opportunity for collision down the road. So suppose you say, okay, I'm gonna turn left. Now you're both running parallel and we already know one of you wants to go the other way. So you have to make a good decision based upon what's reasonable and based upon that rule that everybody has an obligation to do whatever's necessary to stay out of a collision. This is a complicated subject, but it's covered in motor education courses. When you take a course, whether it's an on-water course or whether it's a virtual online course, this, these are some of the things that are discussed and, and you actually learn from them. Right, and, and, and the, the point is, you know, I, I was saying earlier in our, our, our coffee discussion before we started recording, was that, you know, you're, in real life, if you're on the boat and your, your wife is talking to you and your kids are screaming in the cockpit, and your guest wants a Coke, and then the guy is cutting you off. And so, you know, there's a, and, and it's rough, and there's a lot of input. There's a lot of sensory, there can be sensory overload when you operate a boat, you know? So having that education to know and have some reasonable expectation of what that other person thinks and knowing what is right, and you can combine all this to make a better decision more quickly. And that's where I think, where, you know, in general, uh, the education really helps what happens it happens that quick and you have to be able to make the best decision you can in that moment right an excellent point kevin and you know another thing i would add to that and what, what i got out of boating safety courses and also uh you know as content director of water sports foundation uh writing a lot of stories and investigating a lot of accidents that happen one thing that always comes up is the importance of keeping a good lookout Everything that we talked about, about the, the rules of the road and the, and, and the traffic patterns, um, uh, you need to know where the other boats are um, in order to, to apply those rules. So it's important to keep a good, a good lookout. And it's also uh, with your crew, it's important to let them know, hey, keep an eye out. Um, you know, it's not just dad driving here, you know, in a, in a, in a boating environment, um, the crew has, the passengers have a little bit more of a responsibility to, um, to, to stay aware and to help the captain, especially in those complicated environments. We didn't really talk about all the new boaters that came on the water in 2020 due to the pandemic. People use their social distancing um, mandates to get out on the water. And a lot of new boaters, a lot of people bought boats and people bought boats without instruction and they went out on the water without even getting an on-water orientation from the dealer because they were selling boats so fast. And, you know, we saw a lot of incidents, uh, in, in, incidences increase because of that. But, but also um, the fact that the, the boater education courses, a lot of them were in-person only. And when the social distancing rules came out, those in-person classes had to go away. I just want to give kudos to the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary and, and several others, uh, NASBA who stepped in. And they managed to find a way in a very short order to get what was in, in on water or in classroom per Person, sorry, in-person courses into a virtual format. And as a result, at the end of 2020, we, we uh, just did some recent research with all the providers. We found that there was an 80% increase in the number of voter safety certificates in 2020, where we thought in the beginning due to the pandemic that people were getting less educated because they weren't available to get those in-person courses. Um, but yet uh, an 80% increase across the board from voter safety in the courses. So I, I, I want to give those guys uh, kudos for really uh, responding to a critical situation and, and making what's now a better situation for all of us. Voters can take in-person courses, in-classroom courses, or they can take the virtual courses with most all the providers. Jim, that's an excellent recap of the state of affairs, especially with the influx of new voters in recent years. I want to thank you both for addressing this highly important topic. Until next time, for Boating Roundtable, I'm Kevin Falcon.